8 p.m. on Thursday, June 1st. We'll call the meeting to order. Thank y'all for your indulgence, giving us some time to get started here. So I think for the purposes of today, what we have on our list is, um, you know, Linda has a, a draft that she's provided um, with the red line, the clean version of the things that we kind of talked about or touched upon. So I want to make sure we look at that. And then the three outstanding things that we still need to discuss are arbitration, assessment, centers, and PEP. Is that? I think so, yeah. Which I'll have to? I believe so. Okay. So once y'all get this, maybe we'll give y'all a couple minutes and then. Sure that works. It's you want to kind of walk us through a little bit, Linda, just so that sure. Usually we do these one at a time, and there's so many spread out things that um I'm just excited to share a full copy of the agreement. So the first um, changes are in the hiring article. <laughs> we have gone through and made some <clears throat> and the age the 40 redone and prepared a matrix for what candidates need to have for preference at hire. Um, Alternative application process for applying outside of the testing process. And just the lateral entry program. No, one, so let me, while we're talking about this, one question that was talked about at our last association meeting, and I forgot to bring it up the other day when you and I spoke. Um, how does it look if, because I know you were talking about doing away with the written exam for people that were, that had their certifications. What happens if somebody shows up, takes the written exam, fails a written exam, and they turn around two weeks later and just apply? So that's what that was the question that we had. If they have their certifications, they fail our written exam, and they turn around two weeks later and just reapply and be put on the list. How would that look? I mean, that that's just something that was a question that got there's nothing written in there at this point to have any time period between. I guess my question is, what are your thoughts on that? Like, because we. So why would they take the written exam if they don't have to? You're saying the date of the exam and this goes into effect and then they could just show up and take it. Well, what I'm saying is like if somebody could sit could, to, and help me out if I'm, if I'm correct. So if you, you could take the written exam and be placed high on the list, you take that chance. Or you you no. bypass the written exam and just apply and you're at the bottom of the list. Uh, That's the way they want to do it. Yeah, right, because what, what, the point now. right, because how what, the fairness in that is like when you apply, you you shouldn't be able to jump somebody just for applying for the for applying for the job. You shouldn't be able to put it at the top of the list because you're having certifications, right? I mean, so therefore, I think we want to have that stipulation where it's it's an option to be able to bypass the written. I'm okay with that, but how does that look? If like you said, somebody took a chance and tried to get to the top of the list and they couldn't, they failed the written. But now they can just turn around and turn around two weeks later and still just apply for the job and be put at the bottom yeah. of this. So the, the reason, let's go back to the, why this came up with the PD, because that's where it originated. Okay. Chief okay. Sanders. His thought process was <clears throat> you want to give those folks preferential treatment and move them up. Because we've been, BD have been bringing certified people up through a chief's pick process okay. and doing what you're talking about, skipping over people that earn their position on this and testing. Okay. While it's bad for them, it's good for the department because it, you get them in faster and they're, they're already certified and experienced in some cases. So that's kind of what gave birth to that idea. What it was exactly <clears throat> what you're saying. You guys don't, I don't necessarily like too much. It was bringing them up. Okay. And so you would, you would want to encourage those people. If you're certified, don't take the test. Apply through this process. It will get you a little quicker. Okay. 
So, so are, you, are, are you speaking more towards like for lateral entry stuff? Or are you talking about guys that maybe had just graduated the academy with no experience whatsoever? Strictly, strictly lateral entry okay. is all that can apply outside of the process. Okay, so that is something that I guess we were, I misunderstood and I didn't realize that. I thought it was anybody okay. that had their certification. Oh, no, 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 no. Then that makes sense. Okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. Then. I thought it was just, if you had your certifications, you could buy that the written exam. No. But it's only for lateral entry. It was for lateral entry. And because their, their thought was that then you have posting that is year round okay. you're not having to wait for specific test dates correct you have a posting that's year round that doesn't expire for lateral entry so anyone can apply at any time and you get experienced okay. people that are right. interested in the department that can come here or you have the other opportunity as well where you do the test and all of that you know with those specific dates so okay. that was that was the process that we formalized for them uh, and that was the interest as to how we so can I'm it. looking at the language okay. that now that we're talking about this and Carl and left may have made a recommended change here because this has moved up and outside of the lateral entry process and it does focus on certification. So let me Yeah, and you said title or P D. I mean mm -hmm. if a person is only certified, they can apply for this process. Yes, yes, they're not a little set. I thought this, they had to have a somebody can apply like yeah. it's like if you're wanting to make a from up or to come down here, they can apply here and catch them without having to wait for another test. And, and the other thought, I like that. I, I yeah, know. and this is under, which I didn't realize it's under the model. So they have to have PCFP and issue the NT basic or higher. They have to have both of those to go through the outside process. And <clears throat> they may, look, they're brand new right out of the academy. They're still coming in as a lateral, but they're at the very bottom of the high scale. You know, so they're right. Yeah, right. Um, and then the other thing that the chief candidate articulated was he, he had a level of comfort with not making them take the written test because they've already shown that they can pass tests, so they can, you know, study because they passed the academy certification process. Okay, I'm okay with that. I just need, I wanted clarification so I can explain that to my guys. I didn't really know. And for sure, I, I was unclear on the lateral entry quality and not for the human colors. So I'm okay with that. I guess. That's really what it, it, it was intended with that because it was like, okay, the, the purpose of the test is yes, you want to make sure that they have some of that basic knowledge, but also that they have the ability to comprehend and learn like law or, or things right. like that. And so if you know that someone's already got that, you know, yes, and their ability to learn the law and do that, then it really doesn't need that. But you go through everything else. Um, that every other firefighter would yeah. go through in, in terms of being hired. Okay, sure. I just want to look and we'll read over the language, of course, to make sure. But that was a question that we just had, so I just wanted okay. to clarify over here. So it was really meant to be <laughs> lateral entry versus it just being um, anybody that just comes in. So just to be clear, guys, the, the, the wording on page five at the top in red, that's Did not have that. Yeah, that's not in the PD. Which uh, wording it talks about? Is that a red line on them? Yeah. yeah, red line topic. I'm looking. It's already that you place it down below the candidates who took the test. That's right. Yeah, PD doesn't have all of that. Yeah. So it kind of disincentivizes. At the top of page four, the numbering's off there. It's the A that's below B, the second part of that. Yeah. Um, Do they have a chief thing? So I says for the chief that bring these people up. Oh, so this is not the lateral entry. No, they don't. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that's, yeah, I will, that's something, well, yeah, so I see what you're saying, I guess, the A, you say you're, that is, that whole section's on the E. Mm -hmm. It's not. But again, the way that that's written is somebody could come fresh out of the academy and apply to take our test like tomorrow, for instance. I mean, this obviously isn't a big take back the thoughts over, but somebody could take our test tomorrow and fail it and then come back October 2nd and apply and just be put by the top of the list. And I, I don't I don't agree with that. But, but understanding now that we're opening it up to people to apply that have nothing. Right. Correct. But the people that pass the test that may have been that may be put 40th on the list 
that and we're putting them through both academies, right? No, 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 not today's test. So what I'm saying is tomorrow's test. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's test goes under today's standards. Everybody has to have the certifications. If you, if we, if we tell, there's 70 something people from my understanding that apply. If we have 50 of them show up and say, let's say 40 of them pass, right? So we have the guy that's number 38 on the list. So the first person is number 38 on the list. If that person finishes number 38 and it's going through all of the proper channels to do that, and somebody failed this exact same test, October 2nd could apply and jump that person that's number 38 on the list with all of the certifications. Yeah, so they're, they're going to go to the bottom, though. What's the way? So that's what that's. They go to the bottom of their eligibility, whatever, based on whatever certs they have. They would go to the bottom of that list. Okay. I mean, does it? Does does it further complicate by doing is the way I feel. Like. You say what I'm, you say what I'm trying to say? Because from what we did with PD is not that complicated. And so that's where I'm trying to understand kind of the entry. That's not what I mean. How is the PD putting those folks in, in the list? So I thought they were just, you know, taking them in an outside process. And um, they talked with Lee and he indicated that they can play through that list. So, like, kind of challenge. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, Chris? I remember the details. It's just strange if somebody passes and fails a test yeah. and then they come in. No, it is. It is strange. It is. The, yeah. the, the way the PD avoided that, though, is that Tom, don't, don't take the test. If you, if you qualify, you're already certified and everything, just apply. Mm -hmm. Don't take the test, just apply. So, then the question is, where do you put them? Yeah. Okay. I thought they were having two lists. Like, here's your 143 list. I thought you. And then here's your laterals. And you can just pick people off of this at any time. But then you've got tiebreaker issues and other things that come into play with that. So, so, so what you're saying, Linda, is the people with certs are at the in this section of the list. There. The people with just an EMT or just a fire trigger in this section mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, which right. is what I think we spelled out. So that's, that's, the, 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 yes, that's what I thought. Okay. So they would. And a uh, candidate coming through the outside process would go to the bottom of the river. Okay. And I mean, we had the discussion about, you know, if there's a candidate that's a really strong candidate and somebody that's got a certain window of time and you would want to be able to pull that candidate in. Yes. And that was still, I mean, we can have more dialogue on that. Obviously, that was the way that. And, and I'm in agreement on that. Like, if, if we're trying to find somebody from a lateral entry program, say somebody's moving up down here from the Metro Place, right? Who's been working that we want to catch that person. They're not, we don't want to disqualify them or, or not be able to hire them because we're waiting for the list to expire, right? I understand it and I agree with it. I just want to make sure that those people are, we can get those types of people, but we don't create a loophole for someone else that, you know, also, and I don't know that you can fix okay. everything. I'm just sounds like we may need to have a little more offline dialogue. Okay, sure. That to just to make, I think we're on the same page. I just want to make sure that's okay. written correct. Yeah, and that there's not those unintended consequences. That it sounds like time. And the understanding is that if they come in with just the basic, they're still we're still going to put them back through basic again. Yeah. Is that correct? What I understand. Yeah, that's yes. That's what that's, well, that's a, a that's discussion. Our yeah, that's yes, that's all I'm here. Yeah, that's that, that's that's okay. a less thing, right? Yes. I thought where we ended up in that discussion though was that they would go through y'all's academy and not the whole academy. But so yes, that, that, that's something we did. That, uh, I wish I didn't even talk to Chief if he's talking there or not. He's, he's um, at a funeral out of town. So. Okay. Um. I'll, I'll only bring that up just because of the reference thing. <clears throat> yeah. Well, then I'll the EMT basically is slightly above the. Uh, we're just going to say you made basically the same reference. So the addition of the non-classified firefighter, which allows for the part-time um, employees to do limited purpose work. Um, not to exceed a thousand hours a year. Yes, ma'am. We're going to do that. So we made the addition of this change to the points, adding in the social science, um, changing the max points to eight and section under the eligibility list, section B. I think we decided we were good with that. 
Where, where are we talking about? Um, under section three on eligibility, let's see for additional points. Adding. Oh, again. yes, ma'am. Yeah, we talked about it. Yes, we're okay with that. Okay. Yes, um, do you require a probationary period or find that that is um, the one year begins at the end of the mini academy and will run from the year from that date? We're good with that one. Um, I'm just going to take a run through compensation. I know we haven't. Um, let's skip over the base pay, the longevity we did provide. Um, Costing on an alternative that we gave back to y'all, which um, is a modified, takes the police scale but doesn't do their last top step and yes. runs the twelve dollars up through your twenty five. So I'll have numbers on that for consideration. Um, so I know on y'all's issues was was the advanced certification. Pay amount, we've got members on that. Assignment pay for the admin assignment, there's numbers available for that. We've got language and numbers for the arson investigator certification pay. And so that's just, you know, pulling all together in terms of what the compensation will look like. Yes, ma'am. And maybe I'll just go through all these changes and then we can come back and talk about that item more. Sure. Um, on the second vacation and article six is where I added in the leave payout. And I just pulled that language from what we looked at before. I don't have the um, exhibit added in yet, but that's the language that we looked at before. Yes, ma'am, that looks correct. Then Article 8, appointment of assistant chief allows for a third assistant chief. <clears throat> Adds in a provision that if there's no internal candidates that are identified by qualifications, the provisions of Article 18. To include provisions to hire somebody from outside the classified service. And that just really refers me over to the other article. Why don't we just jump over and we'll do look at that article 8 terminology and that. Uh, But in the future, it could be right. Okay. So in Article Eighteen, strike all of the prior section one which had to do during the initial five years which is now passed mm -hmm. and um then propose this new language um updates qualifications for that and i'll just let you guys read through that because i know we've had quite a bit of discussion on the moment um, if you don't have a chance to review this when you all met this morning, or... no, ma'am. We don't, okay. but we're just we really want to take on. I mean, it looks pretty good. I'm just gonna read through this. Okay, quick. sure.
So the other thing I do want to specifically mention is that there had been prior language in the agreement regarding um, a right of appeal under Section 12 of the agreement. And Section 12 of the agreement just speaks to any conflict or disagreements about the agreement itself. So that really isn't appropriate for this. We've talked about it before. I just want to be clear that everybody understands that. So I have to look back. If you look in the red line copy you've got the David will have the language there on page 39. It's kind of in the middle of the what's the item? This is still about the fire marshal language, page 39. You talk about article 12 or article 18. Well, it's, it's a reference to Article 12 that's in Article 8. Oh, I see it. Yeah, okay. So did we just do away with Article 12 altogether? Is that what we did? Because it's not in this copy. I understand, like deleting it out of Article 18, but Article 12 is still here. So, yeah, it says it says no change. Page 26 yes, on does. the red line. The copy that we have, it doesn't have to, which is fine. The red line copy I had it. The other copy is not this side. Yeah, we are having trouble with our copiers. So we missed all that page. Maybe see the page number. Uh, yeah, no, 24 to 25. Page one of the pages gave us. Well, I'm already Article 12 is on page 22. Do you yeah. have page 22? That's what I got. Oh, I do. Yeah, they're just out of order. Oh, no, I see it. Never mind. I'm sorry. That's okay. my fault. My okay. fault. I got it. Yes, it's here. I'm sorry. My apologies. <clears throat> so we good with that one still? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, so then under Article 9 on promotions, we added a point to Section 1 for requisites for battalions, added TCFP Internet Commander Certification, the required curriculum, and increased one point for that. Right. Oh, that was the one point that right. had the red line. Yes. Because um, our copy doesn't show it. doesn't show it at all? Well, it shows 12 points plus 6, which is 18, but it's just 19 points. Um, I don't have the. Oh, point. yes. It's, I don't have it's just a typo that just did. Yeah. It needed to be updated as well. The, yeah. So, right next to where it said 19 points required, it brings. 12 to 7? Yeah. There is. Oh, okay. Thanks for catching that. That was because of the incident commander shirt, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're good at that. Yes. Okay. So then we added incident commander and plans examiner as classes. And then in this section, we're also proposing a change. The state law requirement in 143 is that everyone um, promoting needs a physical exam. And we'd like to align this with our state policy, which says if you're moving to a job that has a heavy requirement, you need a physical. Otherwise, you're not. Sure. As you guys are around the fire service, mostly you're going to something that's lesser. Right. But there would be a few instances when you may be moving back to something that's heavier. So, right. no, that's fine. We're into that. Okay. So, then we have Article 10 on promotions um, is incorporated the alternate promotion for battalion chief, keeps the requirement for a written examination. And as in the assessment center and what that process looks like. 
um, that the city and the association work together to develop guidelines that will be used by the assessment board. Assessment board is three members outside of the San Luis Obispo Department, where the equivalent or higher ranks tested um, in a city of 50,000 or more with two years of experience or more. Um, and then I wasn't, so the proposal is for the assessment to be um, passing score of 70, um, the same as the written test. And I know we talked last time about some different numbers, so did we work all the math here? Um, police is a 60 40 split at that commander level with 60 being the assessment and 40 being the written test. So just wanted to, um, I'm not sure that we were had reached agreement on what we wanted to do there. No, I think, yeah. So what did, what did we talk about? I think it was 70 30, right? For the wage, but as far as the assessments, I thought it was either a pass fail, but helps limit the subjectivity of the as far as people know that in America, no, it wasn't it wasn't a pass fail. I know that it was one thing I was talking about, but it wasn't a pass fail. Let me get back to you on that one. I know we talked about a couple of different things. Let me get back to you on what the, the weight on this, but I would like to say that is one of the things I would I don't know if you put it in here, but uh, if we could put the expiration clause in here saying that it expires at the end of this contract with the option to re it. That's one of the things that the membership wanted to put in there about. Could we do that? That's the membership wanted to, to do it that way. If we didn't like it, we could it would just go away and we wouldn't have to renegotiate it. That was one of the things that itself. Well, you could renegotiate it and put it back, right? With the option of re-upping it the next time. And then making changes. That was one of the things that was specific. Since 2009, guys. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I mean I understand, but I mean that was one of the that was one of the things that I told you. I mean, we got beat up at our at our I specifically got beat up at our association meeting over it. And we've been I, I know you guys have been asking for it for a very long time. And and that's how I sold it. But there's there's our my, the membership is very mixed on it, whether or not they think it's a good idea or not. There's other departments out there that we've talked to that some of them like it, some of them do not. So what we want to do is like at least put it in here to where it can go away if we don't like it. But if we do, I mean, obviously in good faith, we will re we will renegotiate and put it back for you guys for sure. I mean, it's there's no way we wouldn't if we if, if we liked it. But it ain't nice schedule uh, subject to negotiation during the next contract. I mean, so that doesn't. This is where I'm coming from. So first of all, we don't. We don't give you pay and say oh, it's going to end at the end of the, of the thing. Like Correct. when we do this, it's a negotiation on both on both ends. Um, so we're paying something for getting some of those things, and yes. and, it, and it's not okay. It's just going to expire. When we have a negotiated agreement, every agreement can give you the give and take. I mean, because y'all wouldn't agree if, if, for example, if your association membership and y'all do not agree that the assessment process has really worked well, then you would have the ability to negotiate that at the next contract to say you want to take it out. Right. And so that's so much different than the optics of, oh, we're just going to do it and take it out and then we'll have to renegotiate it in. Um, that's a very different thing given that everything that we give is not going to expire, if you will, at the end of the contract right. term. Correct. And so, this, this would be the only thing that we would be giving that would be expiring. Like I said, it's it's for the terms of, like you said, the, the negotiation. It's, if it expires, then you don't have to renegotiate it for it to go out. If we don't like it, we just take it away rather than having to renegotiate it to say, well, we want it out. And then the city coming back and saying, well, no, we want to keep it. And then we have to negotiate that, right? I mean, it's... It's just not going to... It's. I mean, I've heard we only want it for BC. We don't want it for captain. So we gave on that. Um, I've heard I don't want to do arbitration, and that's something we want to talk about a little bit more. Um, or, and we'll do it for BC, but we'll, we want it to expire, you know. But give us this pay, or we're not going to agree to the, you know, we're not going to agree to the terms of the agreement, you know, because you're getting beat up by your association members. I get that, but that's the other side of this. How do I go and sell to yes. say, oh yeah? You know, we got these things, but oh, it's only for a limited time. Uh, that's much different, especially when there was a lot more contention with the police department negotiation, and there wasn't that same thing on a lot of these terms. Like there was no, let's, let's try the arbitration. 
that was heavy water for them to carry. Um, we don't know how this is going to go. And so we're going to look at taking that out at the end of the contract term. So I don't want to put y'all in a bad situation with the membership. And I, I get that we need to figure that out, but it can't be one sided. I mean, there's got there's got to be some something to say, okay, we're we're, we're giving because it's the right thing to do, but y'all are also making some concessions um, because you're also looking at the interest based part of where we're coming from in terms of the interest. So that's just being honest, you know, in oh. terms of what that what that sounds like and how that feels on our end. I see both sides of that, and, and I feel like, you know, like as far as you know, we are giving it up by by allowing you guys to try that, and because it's 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 very uncharted waters for us, right? I I understand that PD and they love it, and there's a lot of things going great with it, but like I told you before, fortunately, fire and PD are two totally different jobs. They're very similar in a lot of ways. We're both servants, right. and we're both you know public servants, but they are very different jobs in a lot of ways. So uh, for our guys to to do something like this, like this and to give it up, it's going to be hard. Right? I'm not telling you we can't sell it. I'm just telling you that this is what the membership told me at our meeting that we had. This, yeah. this was the, one of the stipulations they wanted on it, that to put an expiration deal at and, the end of the contract. And I think, again, it's it's about just, you know, and whatever we can do to kind of help with that message. It's just that anything with any contract. For sure. Basically, you know, those those are all subject to renegotiation of next term. Yeah, they are. But looking like we're setting it up already that it's not going to work and it's not going to fail, it's not having the right attitude and mindset and how we embrace this. Did you say it expires in the contract or did you want to find out? In the end of the contract. So that's where I'm saying anything, any, anything is. Well, but I mean, in the interest of interest based bargaining, if you will, I mean, could, could, could there be some language in, in there that just specifies? So they said, he's not here, I'm not here, he's not here, whatever. That that will be one of the issues. Why maybe it's just a little word we to put that on the issues. Last week. I mean, I, I would think it's something that could be revisited next contract term or something that yeah. would just be something like you know, that. Like, like without hard. saying it versus. I feel like regardless, if something's going to be revisited because if right. it's good, you guys are going to ask for yes. the captain. If yeah. it goes bad, we're going to ask to do away with it. All, yeah. all I'm trying to do is just so, so thinking ahead, how does that look on our part when we say, okay, we don't want to do associate assessment centers anymore. Mm -hmm. Then the city's like, no, we're going to continue them. You know, then then we're fighting over that. So hey, I see it both ways, right? I see it your way, but I also see it that aspect and that point of view as well. I don't want us to go through what we're going through right now, just to get And that's and that's that's not that's not fair that we're doing that because if that's the case, then we're starting at ground zero for every term that we do on these agreements, you know. Um, because we don't ever go into an agreement and, and be like, okay, let's go back to longevity of where it was the contract before, or let's go back to this, you know what I mean? And then we've got to bargain for all these things. We always start knowing that we've made some positive ground. And of course, if something isn't working, if it's not working for you, it's not working for us, we're going to talk about those things no matter what. But I think it, the, the most that we could probably do is put something in there to say that, you know, in recognition that this is a new provision, that it's something that would be revisited as part of the next next contract term. When you say it's expiring, is any term of the contract could expire, but it's something that then plays special weight that that is something that's going to be revisited and, and recognition like, of that. The whole contract, is right? But at least it helps to at least it helps to on the interest part of it. I'm not feeling like what was to help sell it, yeah. right? Because yeah. yeah. right. everybody by right now is. It's black or white for them. Mm -hmm. not, so they're yeah. kind of gray areas. Okay. Yeah. I tell you that personally, I think they're a good idea to try. Personally, I'm on board with it 100%. But it's selling it to the membership. It's not me. Like, I'm just, you You're know, the in the middle yeah, yeah, I'm a messenger. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I, I personally am trying to sell it. I'm, I did the best that I could. And, and like, like Justin just said, maybe this is the verbiage. If we could come up with something to give them the warm and fuzzy, I think we can sell it. Because I do think it's a good idea. I think we need, I absolutely do. Yeah, just let putting that out there. It's not it's not me that's fighting this. I'm trying. Yeah, I know. Mean, have been asking for it for years. Yeah, I think if we just say something like that, that maybe that'll help. You know, to to show that that it's in recognition that this is new, mm -hmm. and it's something that would be revisited as part of you know next agreement. Both whatever. parties in contract agree to place this on the issues list for the next contract. For discussion of the next contract. Okay. You know, something yeah. something like that that at least we helps to to not that. expire it. But at least it's something yeah. that we agree that we're gonna we're gonna talk about again. Okay. Does that help to kind of maybe fair. Yeah, by far. 
this way that's another way to experiment for sure if you want to do that then that'd be great and then okay, and i need to get back with you on the weight of what the weight of the, the written versus the uh so success right? okay So, let me ask you this one the, the 40 written 60 assessment is that how commander level of it for pd right now Excuse so me. there's 60 there are 40 written 60 assessment right which is the way to do it. okay yeah i mean i think we need to get to a point about what amount is diminishing value in this right mm -hmm. and so i for my chair i would say 50 50 is probably a the minimum threshold for 50 written and 50 assessment. Um, but certainly. Let's do, can we write it that way? And I, at least I have something to take, and, and I think we can probably sell that to where we do a 50 50 shot. 50, 50, 50, 50. But you're on the weight on the assessment center. We go one way or the other. So you're saying. But, you know, if we go off 50 50, you want it towards the assessment center. Right. Right there. So the concept is that you start, or this is the concept I've seen, and we followed on the police side. As is at the lower ranks when you get into it, it's a more even split. And as you go up and get more management centric, then you'd have more weighted towards the assessment. Okay. For <laughs> minor suspension, we changed the hours there. I think we talked about that. No, okay, yes, that. Um, Okay, article 12. I signed off on duration of agreement. We'll talk about a team. Article 20 is just to add the provision about like it's currently certified mail notifications to members if they um are presented with a statement and sign off on it, but that can be accepted in the um, certified mail, as well as strengthened a little bit the what the director of civil service can do in the civil service commission, and that yes. would be oh. like passing over applicants and stuff like okay. that. Yeah, I'm totally fine with that. Okay, so Article 21 is the um, arbitrator, which we got in the parking lot. And then Article 22 is the uh, extension of 180 days, which I think we agreed on that yesterday. The 180 is good. We're good with that. Yeah, the membership was good with that one. And that is my concludes my review. I will go through the uh, and pull out the red line documents for the things we've found in green room so we can get those two days. And I'm sorry if I. To put like all the admin stuff and we're looking at the details and mm -hmm. okay. I didn't in, I thought all we were leave chaos. Yes, that is in the vacation sick leave. Okay. Just age. Article six. Article six. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Thirteen on the red line. Are you um and for the because we did say we wanted to go ahead and include it just to make sure that got anybody was like oh yes so that was, you know that was between you you guys and less I was fine with it the other way as well but yes I just agree. just to make sure that gets it clean um what about like the examples and stuff like that were you going to add that okay yes. so and what we looked at before we also have it 
moving the shift and back and forth, but I felt like that was more administrative and this is what we had agreed to include. Um, just, I, I remember the same provisions, right? Right. We just wanted to add the example as an exhibit in case in right. case none of us are here and it makes it clear mm -hmm. more. And I think I sense. put reference to the exhibit, but it's just not in here yet. Okay, perfect. Oh, it says example below, so I just need to include that as an yes. exhibit. Okay. So assessment, we're going to change the language on that to include the recognition where that would be on the issues list for discussion of the next agreement. Um, arbitration. I know, David, you had talked to me about the fact that that was something your membership wasn't as as keen on and what, you know, you didn't know that that would be something y'all could agree to just so we all because I kind of talked with them a little bit about it, and I told you at the time, hey, I understand y'all haven't had as much time to get your arms around it um, as, as the police, but, you know, the F5 is a most world, you know, that, that police work with in terms of those three examples. So just wondered, you know, what was what was it that you were hearing on the arbitration? So was there something? With the arbitration, holy, holy sickly, when, when I explained it all to the membership, that was the one that was a hard no from every one of the members that was in that room. That was just mainly because that's opening the door to our due process. Like once you crack that door open, it's hard to close it, right? And and we believe that there's none of our guys have, have ever had any issues with anything like that. Right. Again, that's the difference in fire and PD. I'm not saying it won't ever happen, but none of our guys have had any issues with anything like this, as well as it's kind of like we're creating a solution for a problem that doesn't exist, is the way one of our members, you know, poached it or, or explained it to us. Um, and when I say us, I mean the e-board. Mm -hmm. Um so our guys, I mean, they were just, they're just afraid that opening that door to due process is just not a good idea. Um, the way civil service is written has worked for in, in these examples. And, and I think it's me personally, I, I have to agree with that. So, and I think with the, all the stuff that we've heard from the advocates in the community and what we heard on the police side was really, hey, you know, if, if you want the best course, then why would you want to protect people that would have some of this kind of conduct kind of a thing, right? And so that's that's really the way that I think it, the perception is. And so that's why we were saying it's not, you still get due process. You still get to prove that the chief acted capriciously or discriminatory or whatever in, the dis in leveling the discipline. It was just for these three things, that part of it, an arbitrator couldn't substitute his or her judgment. So, I mean, that's when I think we just need to, to talk about a little bit more in the sense of kind of where we are with that, but it, it's a it's a really hard thing to come back um, with the pay, some of the pay stuff and pay discussions we're having about having some of those kinds of things. So um, that's why we're willing to give up the, the 188 thing. Cause I think, like you said, if you want a good department or a good force, mm -hmm. why do you want to keep people like that? I think with the 180 day thing solves a lot of those issues, right? It gives everyone time to do everything right. It gives, it gives you guys and the at our administration time to put everything together to, to take care of that in its own way without, you know, having the right of the arbitrator. I mean, because those are, as much as you say, especially the, the insubordination one, I realized that that is a, that one specifically is, yes, we can define what insubordination is, but that can be really taken out of context, I think. So that's why, like I said, I, I, again, I, that was that one was a very hard no between all the members that were at that meeting that day. I don't think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, because you guys were there. Mm -hmm. If I'm missing any, I don't think anyone was supporting The whole and thing? Or? Just that article, that, the, the, the article, you know, the whole article. Just because of that's opening the door to due process, right? Taking away the due process. You know, what we shot for when we, looked, when we came up with this was something that, that protect the due process because arbitrator still ensures that the due process was there. Correct. But it took away, we wanted to take away, this This plays out all across the state where you've got that one bad apple in your department and eventually they do enough to be fired. Right? Correct. Most of the time, and I feel like you know, as tightly as you are and the way I feel about your chief, when that person goes, everybody's like, oh, 
Uh, and then the arbitrator comes in and you go right back. Right. Because it's trying to split the baby every time. So we were trying to come up with a process that sort of pacified everybody. You got your due process, but when the chief made a decision to terminate that bad apple, it stuck. Right. And yes, sir. I know it's 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 spooky because it is so opening up that box to letting us dig in the you know, the, the process in general. Right? It was trying to figure out a way because you're bringing in this person, nobody knows. Great. They're not familiar with our community, they're not familiar with our culture, our standards, they're not familiar with this person who, like I said, it's generally the one that everybody's like, get, get the heck out of here. Mm -hmm. And so they come in completely desensitized to the whole situation. Everybody else has had to live with this person for their whole career, and they're probably going to get back. So I'm done. There's times when I wish I could come to some, some of the meetings to share some of the experiences that I've had, just like I am with y'all. I know that's, that's difficult, but that's, that's where this is aimed. Okay. I'll, I'll, I can coach you to them again, and I'll try to explain it the best I can, but I, I will. That, 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 that one was a pretty hard note. I can't, uh, no, I can't I mean, make any promises there. I'm sure yeah. I'll, I'll make you that offer. If, yes, sir. If, yeah. if they're open to me, they're coming just to, to start with a different perspective. Um, sure. Because I hope, I hope that if anybody knows anything about me and said I'm not fair enough. Yes, sir. It was, I, when I saw this, I, I agreed that I felt like it was something that was good for the, the city okay. and all the employees. Because no, you guys should never give away all your rights. For sure. Um, but the city and you guys have a stake in getting rid of the real bad apples. Mm -hmm. Sure. Absolutely. And arbitrators have a tendency to put them right back at you. And, and I may I may take you up on that. We have a meeting coming up in two weeks. And then we're gonna we're gonna meet this month in two weeks okay, at all. I wish I'm here. I'm not this. I won't take that personal, but okay. it's just a resource if I can help. Sure. And I will have I, I welcome anything like that for sure. Because it, it is it's not because we're not trying, I promise you. This yeah. this has definitely been the hardest contract we've we've done so far. So and we thought y'all was gonna be easy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. 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 It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be okay. We were worried about the cops and then yeah. <laughs> I understand. Okay, so um so we'll talk about that one and you can let sure. let us let know you. if that's something that you think would be helpful sure. that we can do that. And assessment, okay. So assessment arbitration. So now we're at pay. So where are we on pay? <laughs> From when you and I last talked, David. Yeah. Well, literally, and, and let me let me set this up from 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 this is that so the budget is a very dynamic process. Add to it being in a legislative session where they're talking about property tax relief. Property tax relief that is the biggest in history. Where are y'all funded? property taxes, selling tax, right? Um, so yesterday we met with the director's team and I've made a commitment to your chiefs that and the council that we would focus on public safety, right? To try to get y'all caught up. I have a staffing study of 27 people short from 2020. And I think chiefs was that uh, chief standards police was 2021, that they were short 10 officers. So I basically let the two chiefs have two bites at the apple at the beginning of the fiscal year and then at the mid-year to get people. So this current fiscal year that we're in, we will have funded eight firefighters. Next fiscal year, 24, when I looked at all the requests that we got from departments, which I don't even remember the bottom line number, but it was, it was probably about four, it was about four million. John All the requests. I don't know. So, but it was, I mean, it was, it was several million dollars. And we have about one, we have yesterday about $1.9 million that we were working with for all the needs of the organization. Um, that's additional capacity. And for fire and police, both, we were already talking about. Oh, about almost close to nine hundred thousand dollars because one was four sixty and then the other one, right? So it was about nine hundred thousand dollars. So more than, like more than half of what I have for everybody else. 
Um, <clears throat> so y'all were at the top of the list to get more people. Um, and it's to get the four firefighters, also one fire prevention inspector, since that was another another big need. Um, my understanding is you'll have an arson or something that happens and you have to investigate and then you can't do the inspections Friday. So we need to have, have that. Uh, and with the cops too. So um, <clears throat> so we got in the, in the room with all the directors and went through and prioritized Okay, this is coming off the top. This is what's left. What else do we need to put there? I also put already that for mid year consideration, assuming our revenues come in higher than what we budget, that we're going to give you four more firefighters. That we're going to give the chief standards a little bit on his police stuff too, because there were three officers, I believe, and then he has a dedicated community that he wants to hear. So, two years of intense public safety last year we funded all capital outlay things that y'all had had on the books for equipment for years we caught you up so y'all are being caught up in a way that you've never been caught up equipment people and money right and when we give a proposal of eight percent increase in one year, and I've never seen that in any other contract either. If I go back and look at the contracts, you've never gotten that level of increase. But then to be said, hey, well, we've been behind and we just don't want, we need to catch up. We don't want to be behind again. We didn't get behind overnight. And I think it's not realistic and not fair to come into this thinking we're going to catch you up in one contract. You know, I mean, I think that, that we it's going to take some time for us to get there, right? We're going to try to get us to the best of our ability. And, I, I, you know, with having done police, police didn't get all the way to every single thing at market. Um, we have a compensation study, as you know, going on with all the other employees. We're probably not going to catch everybody up to market in one false swoop. So we just need some consideration of that. Of, of understanding and knowing that it's important for us to pay you and pay you fairly, but know that we're making a huge investment in public safety all the way around. And so that needs to be the message, I think, that hopefully your membership here. So I think y'all realize this, you know, and y'all see these things that are happening. But that's that's the message is that it makes it very difficult. We're a hundred thousand dollars apart, and a hundred thousand dollars is significant. I mean, that's a couple of positions for some of the people that were non-public safety um, that were just happy to get that consideration um, after we've given you all the consideration, you know, with your people. So that's <clears throat> that's just something I want to start with, just so that you all kind of understand the context. But also, in a, a legislative session, with what they're doing with property tax relief, I've, I've referenced that. John, and don't hold us to these numbers because it's uncharted territory in the way that they're doing this. And we don't really know what it's going to transpire as once it all goes through. Um, but a couple of things. So first of all, they've never made uh, the property tax stuff really apply to businesses. And we're uncertain whether it does apply to businesses this time because some of the proposals have been to apply to businesses. So with this appraisal cap of going from 10% down to 5%, just that alone would, would basically make it so that we're $2 million less in revenue than we would expect to have otherwise. So that $1.9 million number that I told you we were doing for excess capacity, guess what? We don't have it anymore. We have money for nothing. Just right. to keep things, if yeah, okay. if that happens, that keeps things flat. Now, if the business is getting included, just with what we know now, that's a $4 million deficit in revenue. So that makes it very difficult, even more so when we're talking about projections and budget and the timing of all of this, you know? And so understand that we're, we're gonna be a little more reluctant, you know, to come out and, and be making these big promises on, on wages and things like that when we need to make sure that we're being managing expectations and, and not going out there. Bless even said, Stephanie, is there something I can do to help you on the operation side to get you where, where you know, where, where you need to be with the pay? And I said, no, 
not now because what y'all are asking for is some of it is in the year three two you know and so it's down the road it's not that i need it now it's because we're at the eight five four and even if i wanted to do not like i don't have the capacity i'm not going to do it in this year one did you bump that up for example to nine um and so it's it's that third year and right. so that's what we've been trying to work with and we did the per capita fire police to give an equal amount this is the amount of money that was given you know for for even the police contract and we got a lot of significant changes arbitration and all of that that the council really wanted to see the community really wanted to see so again just setting all that up in terms of what's in our head and I know Linda has talked with um, you, David, about the market and market information. So that's another thing that is, uh, I don't know if I have that one. I know you gave it to me. I mean, I'm, I shared it with you. I don't know that we talked about it. There it is. This is so, Yeah, yeah, this one. that just kind of shows where we are at when, once we do the 8%. Mm -hmm. And she showed us. Where we are with police when we did the contract we did with them and y'all are by doing this eight percent y'all are actually in a much better place than they are and so then to do the five and four is it's just going to get you that much because they have a five and a five right and so theirs is five this year five next year and five there's so it's only a total of 15 percent y'all are getting y'all would be getting more than that so just want y'all to again think about think about that when y'all are talking sure. about pay and, and see if that helps at all with communicating messages. And I don't know if you have other thoughts on things. No, I mean, we, we did. First of all, backing up to the the nine, like I understand that. And, and I thought you were saying like with what Les said about how he can help. Because mm -hmm. um, the 1% the we were asking for was in year three. We're okay with the eight up front and then the right. five, we were asking for five, not a right. nine, five, four. Right. We were trying to do the eight, five, five now. Yeah. Um, I understand completely where you're coming from. And like you said, looking back on the contract, you were, completely correct about the eight percent where we're at with it is is like i told you it's it's we're going off strictly where the where the numbers are in the fire market we talked about this in your office the other day is like the eight percent does catch us up to today's numbers but all of the cities on all of the peer cities and i could go back and go down the list if you'd like every one of those just about are getting a raise in october so that number is now where, where that eight percent catches up to today october we're going to be behind again when our eight percent takes effect they're going to jump ahead so we're those numbers aren't truly correct as far as they're great today, but when it's takes effect in October, they're not. Like I know for sure the Broncos will get seven and a half percent in October, which is fine. That's what they're negotiating, whatever. Mm -hmm. So what we're comparing to them today, they're going to jump ahead seven percent. So that's where we're coming from, which that's why we were looking for the nine. I get it. And we've talked about this, you know, we talked about it when when we did the one year negotiation. I said it, you know, in good faith, we're going to take two percent because we trust that you guys are doing with everything you can and, and we're trying to get you settled in your new position and everything like that. Right. But I knew we were gonna have some ground to make up. And mm -hmm. according to the numbers there, that's all we're looking for. It's like every contract, it seems like we catch us up to today's numbers knowing that the other cities are going to jump ahead of us. And we're not asking to, to leave the market or, or jump ahead of everybody. We're not asking for that. Right. We're just simply asking to finish on the midline, you know, when we finish, because every single contract we negotiated, you can go back, we start below and we end below every single one. I mean, we always use up until recently the plus or minus five percent, right? Which is what that's based on. Right. We generally finish below the zero mark in every single every year, every contract, every single time. That's all we're asking for is to be at that midline or maybe even just above. That's what we were looking for when, when we negotiate that. When we're asking for the eight five five, right? Mm -hmm. I do completely understand where you're coming from with all of the different budget constraints and the, the less money with property taxes and all that. I personally understand completely where you're coming from. It's hard for me to sit here and explain because every member is going to feel something different, right? We live in a very, very selfish society nowadays, right? And I have this argument and, and things with people, my members included, all the time about different things and just everybody has the me, me, me mentality. And I, I personally hate it. I, I, I don't like it. And it's created what is in our society today, I think. Um, that being said, all of our members have the right to vote, right? And right. like I told you in your office, we're going to do our best to sell it. Me, me included. Like all of these guys on the, at this table right here, we're going to do our best to sell this. However, you guys write it up. I'm just trying to say like you were being honest with me a while ago. I'm trying to be honest with you and saying, I don't know that it's going to happen if we can't get the numbers worked with. It's not from me personally. Yeah. I'm doing my best to sell it at every different angle and every different approach. I've used less to help explain it. I've used some of our senior members to help explain it. I've tried everything that I can outside of having Chase or one of you guys show up to our meetings and explain it, right? 
we tried at every different angle and every different approach. It's not from lack of trying. It's just that's where we're at, honestly. I'm not saying it won't get done. I'm just saying that that's how the, the meeting ended up the other day, right? There was a little over 40 people at that meeting, so almost half of our membership was there. So, which is a pretty good turnout for an association. Yeah, that is a great turnout. I think it's, but again, I think it's it's a matter of one one work group demanding something different than all the other work groups within the city. Correct. And so, like, I can't catch y'all up and keep y'all up at a certain level if I can't catch others up too. Right. I mean, I think y'all are phenomenal. Y'all do a great job. Y'all always been great partners. Um, but I think there are other phenomenal groups too, you know, and I want to do that for anybody and everybody that I, that I possibly can. Um, but I just think that it's being a little short-sighted to think that we're always going to have someone that we're catching up to. And that's, that's just the way the game is played. I hate sure. to say it in that particular Absolutely. way, but it is. I mean, it's realistic market. To my used to say it all the time and he nailed it with what he would say. He said, every he, these, the way that these compensation studies are, is we up ours and they compare to us and then they up theirs and it gets to be like this, right? So we're always, we're never going to be <clears throat> at that, oh, we're going to be leading or, or, or where we're going to be midline and we're going to stay midline. If someone else is going to be seeing that we're midline and they're going to catch up to us and they're going to try to up us. So I just don't think that that's a realistic expectation that we're always going to be there. But I think that what I've always understood with the way the meet and confer agreements have always been negotiated is that the first year is a little bit bigger because you're catching everybody up to try to, you know, if you did end the contract a little bit lower than anybody wanted to be, it helped to put to front load it, you know, get you the money faster. And then you always knew that at the end, you would kind of back off a little bit because, oh, you're going to be negotiating next year. So the trailing, you're going to be coming in with that same mentality of, hey, look, we're behind market. We need to up this so that we can catch ourselves up and do that. So 1%, you know, and if this was 5% that we were looking at even next year, uh, not next year, sorry, year four, like once the three-year agreement ends, if it was 5%, talking to us about 6% is not astronomical <laughs> like it is today trying to get to 8%, 9%, you know, whatever that number is, right? So it's a lot more realistic and that's why I just don't want us to cut off our nose to spite our face because of drawing the line in the sand for that 1% and to think that we're going to allow us to totally trail the market. Mm -hmm. That doesn't be who anybody, you know, I mean, it doesn't, we want good quality firefighters, good quality fire team. We don't want this to be something that we're a mediocre department. Mm -hmm. And obviously I don't think that we're there even now, even though we've been trailing, mm -hmm. you know, that's not where I want us to be just from a humane perspective in terms of how I appreciate what y'all bring, you know, what you do every day. I don't want y'all to be trailing all the time. So don't misunderstand that. But even with us trailing today, you're still not Correct. at this like level, you know what I mean? Where you're going to totally lose really good people. Mm -hmm. People stay because y'all are a good department. Yes, and this is a good city to work for. We're held to very high standards. And yeah. just, I've spoke to you about that. We're held yeah. to very high standards. We have one of the best chiefs in the country, right? I've told you this. It's and a, we appreciate it. Yeah. I worked on that too. Yes. So we it's appreciate like, that very much. You know, and it's because of the high standards. Like I said, I feel like just with what you in regards to what you were saying, like I think the membership holistically is with the previous contracts and stuff. I feel like they've been sold that, like, hey, we're going to. We'll, we'll take a small bite this time. We'll catch you up next time. We'll take a small bite this time. We'll catch you up next time. Well, I think that's where everybody's at. It's like, when does this stop? Because it's always we end up at, you know, just below that line. And it's like, we can't ever move the ball as far as we'd like. And it's not expecting, raising those expectations where we're going to be above that line forever. Because I think everyone knows that. But it's like, we've never been above that line. So that's what we're trying to get to is try to be above that midline. With is you know, with, and I think the one percent. Unfortunately, it is only one percent. Or fortunately, how you want to look at yeah, how everyone looks at it. I think they're one percent. I think can get us there to where I think it can make everybody, as far as our membership, happy. I understand where you're coming from, and I don't know. Like I said, it, it's hard for me to say because I don't know where we go from here. I really don't. I don't want it to come down to where our membership votes to contract them. I can't guarantee that will ever not happen. I will do my absolute best to try to sell it to them. But at the end of the day, every member gets a vote. You guys know how that works, right? Every. I mean, I can't make them vote. A certain way i can make sure they sit down and vote i can make them vote but i can't make them vote a certain way yes or no 
And, well, and I think I think the thing that that's happening though is saying we want to be above the midline. No work group within the city is above the midline. Right. That is that is saying that we've got to pay you differently than we pay all other people within the city. And that's just not that's that's not something that I'm willing to do because I don't think that that's fair to all the other people that work for the city. Mm -hmm. um, that's just the bottom line. I mean, it's, it's it's just not that's not where we where we are. I mean, if I get to the day where I can pay everybody, I mean, even our, in our non civil service people, not even all of them are up to the midpoint. Right. Work at midpoint, and we do our best with police and fire to always compare to the market. We don't compare like the way that we do with all, all of our other employees who, oh, as long as you're within this range, right? So it's a, we already treat y'all very differently. And so then this is taking it even up another notch saying, oh, we need to be above midpoint because not everybody within our organization is above midpoint. For sure. there, there are some positions that have been hard to recruit positions where we you know, tried to make some traction, but it's it's those specialized areas. It's not something that it's, you know, across an entire work group, you know, like it would be for y'all. So that that's not something that would be an easy sell on, on my part. I mean, if I could talk a little bit too, just about what this is and means. And so the characteristics of different peer comparators that we look at the big plans are different. Some have less steps, some have very few have more steps than we do, but they have less. So that can tend to skew the minimum and the minimum point. So we really want to look, I mean, the minimum and the maximum. So we really want to be focused on a comparison about where it is at midpoint and then thinking, you know, that also establishes where people are within range from entry point to those that are, you know, on the outside, just by tenure that how long you've been in rank. So with the structure that we implemented several years ago, if you step, you move across. You don't come back up and start at the beginning and move down through the steps. So that means people are advancing the steps more quickly than under the old model. So those are the things that are moving you along and, and earnings more quickly as you grow with the department. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> That's kind of where we, you know, we're still back at the 854 unless you can find that. I, I yeah, can't. There's and, and I appreciate Linda helping try trying to do everything you can to help. I mean, I do appreciate both of you. You know, you've done everything to help, you know, try to get us there. I would say write the article up at the 854 and I will do my absolute best to try to sell it. I can't I can't guarantee you one way or the other, but I will leave. I, and, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, you guys feel free to speak up if y'all feel something different, if I'm leaving something out. But I mean, you guys were at the meeting and I will do my absolute best to try to sell it. And Stephanie, I do understand where you're coming from. And I sympathize with you, I really do, because I know you are in between a very rock and hard place for sure with everything that you're dealing with. And mm -hmm. I commend you, and I think that you were doing a wonderful job. I, I just, I, 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 this is just what the membership has instructed me, and I'm just relaying the message. And I'm probably just going to echo what you just said. I appreciate you saying that, but you know, I, I have the, the, I guess, the benefit of being able to see how she's approaching these pages across the whole organization, which I've never had before, right? I think it's really helping me better understand how a city manager or, or any system um, thinks and operates. Um, and even when she was serving in the internal, she truly told the council and us, all of us, her focus is going to be on taking care of the employees. And she's done that from day one. Right. The, the challenge is it's not, it's not like an employee, right? It's, and it's across all kinds of different, you got people making 50 bucks an hour, you know, people making much more than that. And she's trying to do right by all of it. She's truly, you know, put her money where her mouth is on that. It's challenging because we, we, and you all probably heard us say this before too. We're a poor city that tries to operate like a richer city. We buy the best equipment, we hire the best people, and and we have a low tax revenue. So it's kind of like we're a poor person trying to live like a rich person, but we're doing a really good job of it. It's because we're putting that money where it most matters. But where the yeah, and the people she's done that better than, than the ones I've seen before me. The problem is she's still revenue strapped, and so she can get you right there, but usually not. And I think that's the challenge that she's facing. I know y'all see that, and I appreciate sure. you're saying that. And it's a challenge when the, the membership, whether it's PD or whether it's fired, 
They usually don't see that broader picture, and, that, and really we can't expect them to. But I'm here to tell you she's she's trying and she's up against some real challenges. I, I do believe that. I really do. I think you're doing a fantastic job. I think all of you are. I think holistically the city, we like you just said, I mean, you put it in very good terms. We're not a very rich city and we operate like we are and we do our best. I think holistically we have we're in a good place. I tell that to every one of the new hires that come through here that I get to talk to about the association stuff. I think they came to a great place, you know, but we just we're, we're just trying to keep it that way. And I know that you guys are as well. It's just just me being a messenger. This is the message that we're that I was, you know, told to project, right? Yeah. So yeah, I don't like them telling me that. No. Just and I can appreciate that. I mean, I can appreciate it. You know, you've got people you're representing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not we have to go through the same thing when we're, you know, negotiating and representing things that may not exactly be we believe in the way we feel, Correct. you know. Um, so I can appreciate that and I'm gonna take it personally. You know, it just the, the one thing that I've always tried to be in that is sincere and genuine. And if I had somewhere to turn this. Believe me, in a day, they, they know I've been rocking my head, coming up with ideas of, can we do this? Can we do that? Um, you know, can't sleep at night sometimes because I'm like, what can we do? Because I, I want I want to help you. I yes. want to help you get across. But, and so it's it about printing money. Just so <laughs> he said, he goes, can I print more money? I said, approved. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, it's so, if, that, if that's anything, you know, I, I really do work on, on that. And I feel like y'all are the same way. And so it, it's just us being honest with each other. And, and we're at a point where it's just, I don't have that to give you, you know, as much as I would love to say that I just, I, I can't go and sell that to council knowing irresponsibly that I'd be doing that in that way because I don't have the, the money behind me with everything we have going on to know that we can do all those things that I've been tasked to do. You know, and that we as a city are expected to do. So that's where it gets to be difficult. And so I would never want to be in a situation of going and saying, sorry, this is what they're asking for, but I can't recommend it. I mean, yes, council can always do whatever council wants to do, but it's going to be a difficult place for us to be. Sure. I think, like I said, if you, if you couldn't write it up with the, with the proposal 854, I'll do my absolute best to sell it. And then we can try to. I'll talk to everyone. There's many people as I can. I'll round up everyone, see what the idea of Chase coming to our next meeting and trying to explain the Article 21 about the arbitration. And we'll just try to go from there. Because essentially, that's the two articles that we're in disagreement on, correct? My, is there anything else that we needed to? So we're talking about dispute covenant and because there's still that much capacity that the board would I mean, I just feel like the, I mean, because even if, you know, even if, even if it took some of this, you know, you know, you know, so they couldn't get to the hundred thousand if they get to the I 
halfway there So the only other thing that we did talk about was I was asking if, you know, because you with, with these scenarios that Linda talked sent to you, you know, yeah. um, there's twenty six thousand dollars that you have to walk in front of your at pace. Mm -hmm. So what I was asking is if, if we if we did another twenty just to get y'all to four and a half with that, but you get nothing else anywhere else. That's no ad pace. That's no that's no additional ad pace. Not at all. Like no additional to what you have today. That's what that's what I mean. yeah. yeah, none none of the proposed. So there's no yeah, so okay. you, off, if, if you were able to pick and choose from these to use the twenty twenty six six thousand. Okay, so let me ask you this. So I appreciate that, and that's something I will absolutely propose because that affects the most people in our in our organization. Um, so the eight, five, four and a half, no, uh, everything else, all the incentive pays stay the way they are today. Yes. With the eight, five, four, what are incentive pays looking like? Do we get? Well, we could sit here and go play with them, play with them, and figure out what you could do. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, like, what what do, what do you have? For, well, I mean, what is your proposal right now? I guess that you have written down there. Do you have anything? Well, I don't because what we've what we've got here is kind of a menu that you can pick and choose from. Yeah, I mean, I never yeah. remember that. Right? Is, is, no, not that. I saw them talk to them about some, some. We talked about it, but it all had to come back to public compensation. So right. that was really costing them and kind of what we wanted them to look like. So it's like you could implement it in year one, year two, or year three. That would influence cost, and if you've got um, thirty um, twenty-seven among the bunch, twenty-seven thousand or so to use, how would you pick and choose these to use that twenty-seven thousand? That's what y'all had to work with. Yes, ma'am. So I'm saying, let's take that twenty-seven thousand. If happens? that really is what's important, if that's really what's important, okay. then. But you know, we would we would want the assessment center language the way we talked about it. You know, it's not. Giving right because we're, yeah. we're setting aside our bilingual ask to make that. Okay. Let me um like I said we meet in two weeks and I, I mean that that actually I mean that makes it feel that would be the easier sell. I'm not saying it's a guarantee because at least it gives us options, right? Um and then I will get back with you after our meeting and let you know where we are with that one. I guess because let's see. Technically you would meet on the snow would be the Monday before. So when is our next meeting scheduled? Uh, it seems like we don't have a next meeting. Okay. We said it's okay. okay. Well, yeah, we have, uh, we, have, we have one later in June. We had to cancel it. And we budget. The 22nd is when we had Correct. all for fire needed. Okay. So our next meeting is on the 13th. Um, and I'll see what we can come up as far as the, the arbitration. So that did, to correct me if I'm wrong, the arbitration article and then the base pay, or the pay in general, is what we still have to negotiate. Everything else we're in agreement on? As long as, yes. Uh, we got, got, as we get that figured out. 
Yeah, we're going to put the language yeah. in there that's just more about okay, that, yeah, that's going to be a recognition, recognition that this is a new provision that it'll be renegotiated, re, re, re looked at uh, as part of the issues list next to agreement. Okay. okay. Instead of an expiration. So that helps to, I think, give him that, hey, we talked about the concern. Okay. So they put it in there so that we know that that adds a bright line to it for, for next negotiation process. Doesn't expire it, but the whole agreement expires technically okay. at yes, the end of the contract term. So I think that helps to at least get to that. So yeah, it's arbitration. And 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 really, I mean, I yeah, I mean, that's I mean, where we're at. We have we have the two options, right? That's that's essentially. So let us um we will add, we can if we, when we conclude here. We can sit here and because I, I have that list on my computer and I can sit. We can play with it. And maybe see if we can come up with something. I mean, I'm willing to help you guys okay. too. I'm after next week. I'm on the following week on vacation, but um, what I would suggest is possibly we could help you with two scenarios. One that would be I can go run the what the four and a half would be and okay. what that looks like, and then another model that would build in some ad case to go to that same and then you would have two that the membership could look at. Correct, and that's essentially what we're with some ad pays. Right. How yeah. we do that $26,000 where we put that, okay. or we do the. Okay. The sure. I think we, 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 we can narrow down to one of those two options, and then it gives us something for them to choose from, basically, on what we present. That's, I mean, that's, like I said, that's that's really the most I can squeeze out of turn it yet. Sure. Else? I, I don't think I have anything else on the part of the If you all be here for a few minutes, I'll go run that four and a half with that and run the TAs. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Should be part of the. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Go, Jenny. If we have any questions, if you guys have any questions, feel free. But I think we can get it narrowed down for sure. Hopefully. Online. Thank you, Michelle. If I can be of any help, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.